The greenhouse itself was built on top of a concrete pad, which I don't think I'd ever do again. Um, I didn't have the heart to tear up this concrete pad because if the greenhouse ever gets moved, I didn't want to have to re-pour it, and so that's why we did it. Some of the disadvantages of growing on top of a concrete pad is, number one, we've got this giant insulated uh, SIP panel, structurally insulated panel on the bottom, so it's like R50, um, which is great because it slows the amount of heat being lost out of it, but it's not great because then we don't get access to our subsoils and our soils, which provide a greenhouse with a lot of thermal mass, but those subsoils also will give your plants access to nutrients that you can't get when you're growing in raised beds. And so because it's growing on this, on t because the greenhouse is mounted on this concrete pad, it'll be very tough to make this into a four season greenhouse without the use of a lot of fossil fuel. It also causes a lot us to, to have to deal with a lot of plant pathogens and problems because our plants don't have access to the type of soil that they would had we planted the actual greenhouse right into the ground and not on top of a concrete pad. So if you're looking to, to build a greenhouse, I highly recommend that you don't grow on top of concrete, um, that you actually remove the concrete or make sure you place the greenhouse in, in a location that doesn't have concrete underneath it. You put a frost wall into the ground. Uh, you actually give your plants access to the same type of soil that you'd have in a regular garden. You'll notice that the glazing angle on this greenhouse is really steep. When I was designing this greenhouse, I didn't have a lot of greenhouse experience. This was over 10 years ago. And I was really building the greenhouse based on some books that I had read, specifically one by Rodale Press, which is kind of pretty famous. You can pick it up really inexpensively on a used book website like Amazon for like three or four dollars. And the book was written in the 1970s when polycarbonate didn't really exist or if it did it was really expensive. And so the book actually recommended using glass instead of polycarbonate. And glass is interesting, it's very transparent, but when sun hits glass at um, an angle less than perpendicular to the angle of glazing, you get a lot of reflection and a lot of refraction. And so the recommendation within that book was to set the glazing up to be perpendicular to the sun in the season that you intend on growing. Polycarbonate is quite different in that the polycarbonate itself uh, actually diffuses the light and so the glazing angle is far less important when you're using polycarbonate. So to do it all over again, I'd use a much shallower angle. In fact, the angle would be set up based on the snow load of the area. So um, using a shallower angle with larger trusses that could accommodate the snow load would allow for a much more ergonomic greenhouse. One of the biggest problems I find with this steep glazing angle is that I'm constantly banging my head against the rafters when I'm inside working on it. Um, and so I would recommend that when you're designing a greenhouse that you think about snow load, ergonomics, um, when you're actually designing out the angle of the greenhouse itself. Okay. What you're looking at right now is the bottom vent wall and overall it works okay. I'm not super happy with it and I think this is a great learning opportunity for me but also for you guys. What I've noticed is that this steep glazing surface that we used um, is great for shedding the snow in the winter time but there's not a lot of room for that snow to go anywhere. And so to do it all over again, I'd put a knee wall in here, um, which would basically just be a standing wall without any vents in it. And then I'd put the vent wall above that. Um, the reason is a couple fold. Number one, like I said, so that we have a place for the snow to accumulate in the winter time. Number two, if you look inside, you'll see that our raised beds are right behind these vents. And so that really limits the amount of air that can move through here. So having that knee wall would allow for snow accumulation but it would also allow us to move the vents up, which would allow for more free flow ventilation because the garden beds would not be obstructing the airflow.